In this video, we're going to look at what happens if you know the Fourier transform of a function f of t, and you want to know the Fourier transform of its derivative. All right, so if the Fourier transform of f of t is given by f tilde omega, then we want to know what the derivative, the Fourier transform of the derivative of that function is. By definition. This is given by this expression. And we can integrate by parts. So here you is e to the minus i omega t. This makes du minus i omega times e to the minus i omega t. dv is the derivative of our function times dt, which makes v just equal to f of t. So that means that if we transform up the derivative of our function is two pi u times v. Evaluate at minus infinity and plus infinity minus v du. So a minus with a minus gives you a plus. Okay, and then we have to put some restrictions on the behavior of f of t to be able to evaluate this. This is an oscillatory term, so it will have some non-zero value probably a plus or minus infinity. So we need to find a way to deal with this. So we're going to restrict the behavior of f of t to essentially be bounded. So the function goes to zero as t goes to plus or minus infinity. So that means that this term goes to zero so the Fourier transform of the derivative is given by this. Okay, so we brought in the two pi over here and took out the i omega just for uh, ease of visualization. And now we can directly identify the term inside the parentheses as the for a transform of our original function. All right, so this says that when you take the first derivative of a function, all you need to do in frequency space is multiply the Fourier transform by i omega. And if you follow the same line of reasoning for the second derivative, you will get i omega squared times the Fourier transform of our original function. And in general, the Fourier transform of the nth derivative of our function is i omega to the power n times the Fourier transform of our original function f of t. This is a very useful property of the Fourier transform that makes solving certain differential equations uh, a lot easier. So as a partial example of using this property, we're going to consider the differential equation for a force damped harmonic oscillator which is given by this. 
So gamma is the damping coefficient, omega naught is the natural frequency of the oscillator, and f is the force that's being applied to the oscillator. And here I've just used a popular notation where I've replaced derivatives like this with respect to time as dots. So if we take the Fourier transform of both sides of this equation, then we get this because the Fourier transform is an integral it has distributive properties. So the Fourier transform of the sum of several terms is the Fourier transform is the, the sum of Fourier transforms of each component. The same thing as Fourier transform of that. Gamma is just a constant, so we can move it out of the integral. Omega naught squared is a constant, so we can also move it out of the integral. And this is just some generic Fourier transform of the force of the force. So if we denote the Fourier transform of the displacement of the oscillator x of t by x tilde omega, then what we're left with is I omega squared x tilde omega for this term over here plus gamma I omega x tilde plus omega naught squared x tilde omega and the Fourier transform of the force. If we factor out and isolate the Fourier transform of our displacement then we're left with the following expression for the Fourier transform. And ideally, given some force applied to the oscillator, we could then find the solution to this differential equation by computing the inverse Fourier transform of all of these. And this gives us an alternative way of solving this differential equation where we've gone from uh, something that has derivatives to a completely algebraic expression. And this is a powerful property of Fourier transforms.